In this video, we'll learn about some of the basic concepts of IP addressing and subnets. So here we see an example IP address, 10.1.1.11. And just as a side note, this is a private IP address. Certain ranges of IP addresses are private and they're only for use in a private network. And we'll talk more about that when we have a lesson on network address translation. And so within an IP address, the values are separated by dots. So 10 is our first value, then one, then one, then 11. Each of these sections of an address are referred to as octets. So my IP address has four octets. Why are they called octets? Well, that's because of the fact that each of these sections of the address are made up of eight binary digits, eight ones and zeros. We're not going to break down to binary here. And traditionally, a lot of networking lessons do that. I don't think it's really necessary these days because there are calculators that can do it for us. And most of the time, that's what you're going to use. So rather than spending a bunch of time on binary, just understand that each of these chunks of the address are called an octet because each chunk of the address is made up of eight binary digits. And so in the diagram here, you can see that we have two subnets. We have the 10.1.1.0 subnet and we have the 10.1.2.0 subnet. So what do these two subnets have in common? Well, they both start with a 10.1. So I've got 10.1.1.0, 10.1.2.0. They both start with a 10.1. And these two subnets are what we call a slash 24. That means that the first 24 bits are the network address. And so remember, each one of these chunks of the address is eight binary digits. So we've got 8, 16, 24. That's the network address. 10.1.2, the first 24 bits make up the network portion. The last eight bits I can play with. Those can be the addresses of all of my computers in my network. So basically, with the slash 24 networks, we've got an address range of 10.1.1.0 through 255. That's how many computers I can have in this subnet. Now, some of those addresses are reserved, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. How about the 10.1.0.0? Well, the 10.1.0.0 address has more possibilities than a slash 24. This is a slash 16, which means that the first 16 bits are reserved for the network itself. And the last 16 bits, I can use however I want. So I have those second two octets to play with and divide up. And as you can see in the diagram we've been using, we have taken the 10.1.0.0 network and we've broken it up into multiple smaller subnets. So this 10.1.0.0 address can include all of the addresses between 10.1.0.0 through 10.1.255.255. And that's a whole lot of computers. And on the screen here, you should be able to see a link for this subnet calculator. So if I'm using the 10.1.0.0 address range and a slash 16, look at that. I can have up to 65,534 addresses in that range. Now, what I might want to do is take this one big subnet and start to carve it up into smaller subnets. For example, 10.1.1.0 slash 24. Well, that subnet supplies me with a maximum of 254 addresses. So I can take that one big slash 16 and I can carve it up into smaller sets of address ranges. And now I can have multiple networks and I can break those networks up and I can put routers in between them and I can have multiple subnets and I can segment my network. And I could go even further than this. So for example, if I have a slash 24, 
Well, guess what? I could even break that up into multiple smaller subnets as well, like a slash 28. And each of these subnets is going to have only 14 addresses. But if I need multiple smaller subnets for some reason, I could do that. So let's focus in on the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 subnet. Now, within that subnet, there are some special addresses. First, we've got the network address. That is the first address in the subnet. So it is 10.1.1.0. That's referred to as the network address. We can't use that for any machines or interfaces or anything like that. That address is reserved. And then typically, we are going to have 10.1.1.1. So that's the first usable address in the subnet. Normally, we are going to assign that address to the interface on the router. So the router that connects to the subnet, we're going to give that an address, typically the first usable address. We'll call that our default gateway. So all of the computers that are in the subnet are going to use 10.1.1.1 for their default gateway. Any traffic that needs to go to any other networks, any other subnets, is going to be directed to that default gateway, and the router will forward the traffic from there. And then last but not least, we've got the broadcast address. The broadcast address is the highest possible address in the subnet, and any packets that are sent to the broadcast address will be received by every single device within the subnet. So those are three addresses that we typically can't use for the computers connected to this network. That leaves us with 10.1.1.2 through 10.1.1.254 as all of the addresses that I can assign to the devices that are within this subnet. Okay, so let's take a moment to do just a short review. In this lesson, we learned about slash notation. So for example, with a slash 24, 24 bits of the address are going to be the network portion of the address. With a slash 16, 16 bits of the address are going to be the network address. And that's going to mean that we can have more hosts. And a slash 8, only 8 bits are the network address. And that means we can have even more hosts. And we can figure out what these different subnet masks and what these different address ranges mean using our subnet calculator that I shared with you in this video. So the network address, that's the first address of whatever address range we're looking at. It's the slash zero. And so for example, if my network is 10.1.1.0 slash 24, 10.1.1.0 is the network address. And 10.1.1.255 is the broadcast address. That's always the highest possible address in my network range.